Thank you for joining us for this short video presentation of laparoscopic suturing. In this video presentation, we will review the history of laparoscopic surgery, discuss the techniques of laparoscopic suturing, and review video clips illustrating the complex task of laparoscopic suturing. The goal is to break this complex task down to its component parts to simplify the process. Though laparoscopic intracorporeal suturing may seem to be a difficult task, with proper training and diligence on the part of the surgeon, this skill can be quite easily mastered. Dr. Osler said, diseases that harm call for treatments that harm less. This view espoused by Dr. Osler lies at the heart of laparoscopic surgery. We all know the benefits of laparoscopy, but as laparoscopic surgeons, we owe it to our patients to be able to perform the same operation laparoscopically that we perform using an open technique. In order to do this, we have to master one of the basic skills of surgery, the art of suturing. Let's take a moment to look at the laparoscopic timeline. In 1985, the modern era of laparoscopic surgery began with the first laparoscopic cholecystectomy performed in Germany. A short three years later, Dr. McKernan and Dr. Say in Marietta, Georgia, performed the first laparoscopic cholecystectomy in the United States. By 1991, a number of other surgical procedures were accomplished using a laparoscopic technique. Laparoscopic approaches to anti-reflux surgery, vagotomy, colectomy, splenectomy, nephrectomy, and inguinal hernia repair were successful. By 1993, adrenalectomy, prostatectomy, and Roux and Y gastric bypass had been completed laparoscopically. Looking at the data regarding the adoption of laparoscopic surgery, one can see the enormous impact of laparoscopic techniques on common surgical procedures. In the early part of this decade, 88% of cholecystectomies and 72% of anti-reflux operations were done laparoscopically. However, only 25% of hysterectomies and only 11% of colectomies were done laparoscopically. Fast forwarding to 2008, only 40 to 50% of colectomies and only 40 to 50% of hysterectomies are done laparoscopically. Though the techniques for laparoscopic colectomy and laparoscopic hysterectomy were worked out in the early 1990s, about half of these surgeries are still done in an open fashion. The next logical question is, why? Why has laparoscopic surgery not progressed more quickly? I think that Dr. Soper and Dr. Hunter answered this question for us in the early 1990s. They wrote, it's a frustrating and humiliating experience for a surgeon to have the entire operating team watch on a video screen a 15 minute struggle to tie a single square knot. When we as surgeons cannot do something well, we have been trained to take the most conservative path possible. The solution to this dilemma is additional training in the technical aspects of laparoscopic surgery to allow patients the same safety net in the laparoscopic arena as we provide in the open arena. When we know that we can do the same procedure laparoscopically that we can do in the open arena, we as surgeons will be more likely to offer a laparoscopic surgical approach. This is a video of an experienced board certified surgeon attempting a laparoscopic intracorporeal knot. The problem for this surgeon is not skill, it's a lack of knowledge of the steps necessary to achieve the end result.
As laparoscopy developed, technology developed with the addition of new procedures. Mechanical stapling devices and suture assist devices were developed, and the basic skills of suturing were reserved for the open arena. We now know that there will be times when suturing is essential for the safe completion of the operation. This requires that we retrain ourselves in this most basic of surgical skills. In this video, we will be demonstrating to you the various components of suturing so that you can piece these steps together in a fluid motion. Each step builds on the next. Something as simple as introducing the needle in the wrong orientation will add additional unnecessary steps to the process. Efficiency depends not on how fast your hands move, but rather how precisely and how planned your hands move. Surgeons learning to suture laparoscopically commonly drop the needle, try to make the wraps too high, and leave long tails on the suture. As you can see, all of these issues make suturing appear much more complicated than it really is. It has been said, I can recognize a good surgeon not by how he cuts, but how he sews. In order to be able to sew effectively as a laparoscopic surgeon, it is going to take a solid understanding of the steps of laparoscopic suturing and knot tying and then repeated practice. Most importantly, it's going to take attention to the details of the technique. It's not practice that makes perfect, but perfect practice that makes perfect.